Mercedes ML350 camshaft adjuster replacement. I'm Brian Esso from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of changing out the camshaft adjusters, the intake and the exhaust. The first thing you need to do is remove your air cleaner assembly. It just lifts off. It's pressed on so there's no bolts or fasteners. Just lift it off. So I'm doing other repairs on this vehicle so that's why you'll see it in this type of state. But once you get the air cleaner off, I'm going to show you how to change out the intake and the exhaust adjusters here. So if you look, the top one here is the intake and the bottom one is the uh, exhaust uh, cam adjusters. I'm not going to show you the left side or the passenger side here. That's because it's the easy side. I'm going to show you the hard side and then you can just duplicate it over onto the left side and minus half the stuff that we have to take apart over here. So this side is really easy. We're just going to take the fasteners out and pull it off. So I wanted to share with you the part numbers you're going to need to uh, do this repair. The parts are the same for all four adjusters. And I'll link them up in the description of the video. You're also going to need an O-ring for the uh, power steering reservoir here. We're going to take that off. And you're going to need a new ceiling O-ring here. Uh, if you don't replace this, it will leak. So uh, I'll link this up in the description also. One of the first things you're going to want to do is to unplug the connectors. The little gray lock tab slides up and then you can squeeze the connector and then pull it off. So you're going to do that for the cam adjusters. So on the exhaust adjuster, we can't get to it without removing the uh, power steering reservoir here. So we're going to go ahead and remove the cap and we're going to suck out as much of the uh, power steering fluid as we can. And uh, that way we can get this off and get the access to the uh, cam adjuster bolts back there. So I'm going to use my fluid extractor here. It's made by Mighty Vac. Uh, if you don't have something like this, uh, you can use a turkey baster and just suck out as much of the fluid out of the reservoir as you can. This will reduce the amount of mess that uh, we create when we take this all apart. The reservoir is held on with three fasteners and a clip. So there's a horseshoe clip that's right here on the side of the reservoir we need to get to. And the best way to get to that is to, is use a flat blade screwdriver like this. And you come in from the back, from the back side like this. So you reach around like this and uh, you'll get the tip of the screwdriver on the horseshoe clip. And I'll get the camera down there so you can see. So we'll come down here and then you come at, a so at the side and then you put the tip of the screwdriver in between the horseshoe clip and give it a little twist like this. And um, you can do this all by feel. You don't have to actually see what you're doing. It, and you can also see the return hose right there. It's right next to it. So you pop the clip out just like this. So I did this whole process by feel. So I was reaching down here and you can feel the screwdriver going in behind the, uh, the clip. And also, if you notice, I left the hose on for the return line here. You can take that off if you feel like it's in your way. But I left it on and I take it off later in the process. So now we're going to remove the, uh, the, the three... T30 Torx bolts. There's one on the top here, one through here in the middle here. Once you get this one out, then you can just push the uh, radiator hose down and out of your way. And there's going to be a third uh, fastener right on the uh, side of it. Now that I have it unbolted, before I take it off, I'm going to crawl underneath the vehicle here and take off the lower shield here. So I'm going to remove the 10 millimeter uh, fasteners that are holding the shield on. They're just around the perimeter and in a couple in the center of the shield. Go ahead and remove these fasteners. Once you get these removed, you can drop that shield. And the reason why is I don't want any uh, power steering fluid and stuff like that leaking on top of it and then it leak out later on. So we just go ahead and remove that so we can put a bucket underneath the vehicle and allow the, uh, the power steering fluid to drain down into the bucket and catch it. Now you can wiggle and shake the, put, the reservoir and pull it off like this and a little bit of fluid is going to drain down. That's normal. You can soak it up with rags if you want to. And this is what that horseshoe clip looks like when you get it out. Now that we got the power steering reservoir off, I wanted to show you where that uh, C-clip was uh, located. So if, if you look right here, the C-clip was right here just like this and this is uh, where we put the screwdriver in there and popped it out. So now we're going to remove the exhaust cam adjuster here first. And you're going to need an 8mm e-torx uh, female socket here to remove the fasteners. So you're going to remove the three uh, fasteners holding the, the cam adjuster on. Once you get the bolts removed, now you can use a pry tool or screwdriver and you can pry the, uh, the cam adjuster outwards and pop it off. To get it out, I had to go back and forth left on to the left and the right side, back and forth, giving it a little twist with the tip of the screwdriver and you know, going back and forth and kind of working the uh, cam adjuster out from the uh, cylinder head. Once you get the cam adjuster backed out far enough, you should be able to just pull it out like this and set it aside. 
So if you look inside the uh, cam here, there's a little a little spout sticking out, and the adjuster pushes on that and opens up oil passages, allowing oil to flow into the cam adjuster and change the timing, kind of like a variable valve timing on a Honda. Now the fasteners on the intake adjuster are behind the oil cooler here, so I'm using an 8 millimeter e-torque wrench. Uh, this one's made by VIM Tools. I will link it up in the description of the video. Uh, once you crack those free, you should be able to just spin them out with your fingers. So you're going to take out all three of the fasteners. You may have to use all, take out all three of them with the wrench and uh, remove those. And there's just enough room to get your fingers back here and get the fastener out without having to, having to take off the oil cooler. So you'll take out the uh, fasteners like this. Once you got the bolts removed from the cam uh, adjuster, now we need to remove the cam sensor here. So remove the one bolt holding it on, and you can just kind of wiggle it and pull this off. And once you get that out, now we can pull the cam adjuster out like this, and we should be able to clear the, uh, the oil cooler here and get it out. So now I wiped out the, uh, the ports, make sure they're nice and clean. Now we're going to take a little bit of a silicone-based uh, lubricant, and we're going to put that on the uh, O-ring here that seals it. This will help it slide in without pinching the O-ring. So I put a thin little layer on the, uh, the O-ring here. You make sure it's silicone-based. You don't want a, 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 a petroleum-based. That will cause the seal to swell up. So I use seal glide. It's made for using brake, uh, on brake calipers and stuff like that, and it works really well. So once you get it lubed up, then you can just line it up and then push it in until it fully seats into the cylinder head. Now you can start all three of the fasteners. I recommend you start them all and leave them loose before you tighten them down. After that, then you can put the uh, exhaust adjuster in. Make sure you lubricate that seal and push it in, and then you can start all the fasteners for this. Now you can go ahead and reinstall the cam position sensor. You can change out the O-ring. I just used O-ring that we had in stock, changed it out, and we're going to lubricate the uh, O-ring here, and then we're going to press it back into the, uh, the orifice here until it fully seats, and then we'll start the fastener. Now we're going to tighten down all the fasteners. Um, you can't get in here with the torque wrench or anything, so I just went ahead and just snugged them all up with, the, uh, with my little wrench here. And so I went to it, touched it in about a quarter turn more or so. Now the cam adjusters are installed. We need to clean up the uh, the mess here. So I'm gonna put my thumb over, or my finger over the port here where the uh, power string goes, and then I'll spray the whole thing down with some brake clean and wash off all the uh, spilled uh, power steering fluid here. Now that the spillage is cleaned up, I'm gonna remove the seal from the uh, pump here. I used a little uh, little pick tool right here to pick out the, uh, the rubber O-ring here. And once you get this off the pump, then we're gonna just swap out the uh, for a new one. So you're going to install the new one, and I'll link this up in the description of the video. Now you can uh, clean up the reservoir, wipe it, give it a good wipe down to make sure it's nice and clean, especially the port where the uh, O-ring goes over. You don't want any sand or anything in between that. Going back on, I found it's easier if we go ahead and remove this hose, and it's much easier to remove the hose now that it's out here in the open. So you're going to need a pick tool, a 90 degree pick tool, a pretty tough one, and you're going to pick the little clamp open and take the hose off. Instead of reusing the old clamp, I decided to switch over to a German style uh, hose clamp here. So now I took the uh, reservoir and slid it back over the pump and back into the position. And I'm going to start the, uh, the three fasteners. So I'm just going to start all three of them by hand, run them in until they're snug, and tighten all three of the fasteners down by hand. And now for the tricky part is to put the C-clip back in. So what I do is I just reach down there and I kind of feel the grooves. So I hold it like this with my finger, my forefinger, my, my index finger, and I slide it into position. And you'll feel it go into the groove of the, uh, of the reservoir. So you, you push it into the groove as far as you can. If you're lucky, you can push it all the way in until it seats by hand. But most likely it's going to stick out like this. So the, how I get it to fully seat in there is I take a socket like this. This is about a 15 or 16 millimeter socket, deep socket. And I put it on the edge of the uh, C-clip. Then I use a pry bar and pry against the, uh, the little uh, bracket here on the side of the ABS module. And just lightly give it a little pry and that'll pop it in. It doesn't take much force to get it to go in. And when you get it to pop in, it's going to look just like this. It's fully seated in there. Now you can go ahead and take your new hose clamp, slip it over the, uh, the reservoir return hose here. And we can go ahead and slip this hose back onto the port. Once you got the hose back on, you can go ahead and tighten up the clamp. If you choose to reuse the old clamp, which is a reusable style clamp, 
you can go ahead and do that but it's a kind of a, a pain in the butt to get it to go on down here in this tight confined area so I choose to uh, switch over to the, the screw type clamp now you're ready to go ahead and plug the uh, the sensors and the uh, adjusters back in. So go ahead and plug those all in. Make sure you push the lock tabs down until they secure. Now we're ready to fill up the power steering reservoir with power steering fluid. It takes special fluid on this vehicle. You don't want to put just regular power steering fluid in. It's a mineral-based uh, fluid. I will link it up in the description of the video. So I like to pour the fluid in all the way until the reservoir is full to the complete top and then I'll start the vehicle and that'll drop the level down a little bit and it usually drops it down pretty close to perfect if it doesn't then we, we can uh, suck a little bit out or add a little bit if we need to. So I had the fuel lines off earlier in the repair I was doing earlier so it took a while for it to pump the uh, fuel rail back up and start up that's the reason why I had it crank a few times but yours should just fire straight off. So I went ahead and shut the vehicle off and double check the level here it's clearly over full so I'm gonna suck a little bit out and then I'll double check the uh, level the oil, the cap has a dipstick on it so you'll check the level once you're satisfied that the level is correct that you put the cap back on you can give it a little wipe down and clean it up a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and put the air cleaner on after we put the air cleaner on we're gonna go back underneath and, and clean off a little bit more and put the shields on below so we'll slip the air cleaner on around the mass airflow sensor in the back and make sure it lines up around the uh, PCM there and you'll it, you'll see how they line up and then to just press it down until it locks into place and then we'll plug the hose here for the secondary air injection uh, fresh air inlet here plug that into the air cleaner and then we can uh, put the top engine cover on or the front engine cover on it lines up with some slots on the front of it you just push it on and then push it down until it locks in place so before I put the lower shields on, I like to spray everything down with some brake clean and wash all the uh, the runoff uh, power steering fluid here, make sure it's all cleaned up, get it as clean as I possibly can, wipe it down with some rags and clean this all up. And then once that's all cleaned up, then you can go ahead and put the uh, shields back up. So I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way if you need to pick up any of those, you can find those there. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.